business wants it that way, you will have to do it. So, dimensional table typically are, are highly denormalized. So, dimension tables always are highly denormalized. But now, snowflaking makes them uh, normalized. So, they are usually quite small, less than 10% of the total data sto storage requirement. So, when they are denormalized, it is very small. It is a very small single table sitting there holding the information about the products. Since dimensional tables typically are geometrically uh, smaller than fact tables, improving storage efficiency by normalizing or snowflaking has virtually no impact on overall database size. So, what it means is whether you try to normalize it to improve the efficiency of the query, snowflaking will not virtually impact the overall database size because you are reducing the redundant data actually instead of storing the product line in every product dimension dimension uh, row you are trying to separate them when someone wants to analyze the data by sub product only then it will go into the second table or else they will maintain only in the higher level table when we look at the actual report or the or the model diagram you will really understand it easily rather than this theoretical part of it so we almost always trade off dimension stable space for simplicity and accessibility so we will always buy that uh, formula because of the simplicity and accessibility snowflaking is always there in uh, most of the data warehouse models but it is a second flavor first they built a star schema later uh, they realized that we wanted more information and they start uh, doing a snowflaking schema there so bringing together facts and dimensions this is the important part of the data model now that we understand facts and dimensions let's bring that uh, two buildings building blocks together in a dimensional model that is where uh, we are talking about a fact uh, sorry a star schema we talked about fact table, we talk, we spoke about dimension table. Now we are getting them together. It just relate to your real time story. Yesterday we had a story. Our hero moved into his palace. Which earlier they were like uh, five uh, apartments. In each apartment his parents were living separately. He is living separately. His in-laws were living separately. His brother was living separately. So everyone had their common area, their bathroom, their kitchen, uh, what not. A parking space now they moved into a five bedroom apartment for them the common area is actually living room each bedroom is private for them corridors are private for them so it is like that in the same way here they are attached there is a common area for all the five uh, dimensional tables surrounded by this fa fact table so let us uh, go and look into it the fact table consisting of numeric measurements is joined to a set of dimension tables filled with the descriptive attributes so fact table is having numerical measurement and actual description is in the dimension table that's all it is this character star like structure is often called as a star join schema let us see the schema so what you call why you call the star schema is the fact table surrounded by the dimension tables if you look at it it looks like a star this term dated back to the earliest days, days of relational database. So earlier when you, when the relational database has started, it was not in the normalized structure. It was like a denormalized structure. But then to improve the performance, they went on normalizing. If you look at uh, days in like 2000 or 2001, you have only three normal forms. Right now there are eight normal forms because of the growing demand in the market. They are trying to trying to like uh, uh, expand the database into normal form 8 which means it is very easy if you relate it to your real time scenario guys earlier it is a joint family culture everyone live in the same home everyone adjust in the same plate but now it is kind of uh, uh, individuality structure a, a kid even doesn't want to share his plate with his uh, uh, with his family. He want his separate plate, he want his separate bed, he want a separate rack, he want his own individual cycle. Everything he wanted separately. So, his bedroom will turn itself as a home. You will have to partition his bedroom saying this, this is his play area, this is his uh, uh, working bench, this is his sleeping place, everything. So, which is you are normalizing the structure. 
you are moving from a normal form 3 to normal form 8 because within his own bedroom you will have to separate the uh, separate the uh, room allocate spaces for different things so the the building is expanding earlier there used to be only two bedroom or three bedroom house now it has become eight bedroom nine bedroom ten bedroom even then people feel oh it is a small home so that's how um, uh, we are forced to expand even to the normal form eight so dimensional models are gracefully extra uh, extensible to accommodate changes so target as we discussed so far you can always add a dimension you can always uh, 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 snowflake a dimension that is all possible the predicate the predictable framework of an dimensional model withstands unexpected changes to changes in user behavior so the predictable framework the dimensional model which you have designed uh, is predictable there are, it is going to go under many changes but still you'll have to accommodate it in a single family home first you thought all the five bedrooms you have allotted are fine but after everyone entering into that you may feel it congested you may want to add few other things uh, people may feel to go back to the same refrigerator and pull out a soda instead they wanted to have their own refrigerator that is a new thing which they are we are snowflaking there so they will have one more refrigerator in their own room a mini refrigerator that is a snowflake so behavioral changes will come up there every dimension is equivalent all dimensions are symmetrically equal uh, entry point into the fact table so equal importance for every family member if anyone is given low importance they are going <laughs> they are going to run out of the home so every everything literally speaking is the same importance this is the dimensional model we were talking about so there is a small uh, fact table the date key product key store key and uh, the rest of the information like quantity sold and the and the dollar amount it is surrounded by a date dimension the store dimension and a product dimension so you are looking at it in the product uh, market and time that is a dimension model we were talking about there is one more table which will come up we will look at the model in detail but a simple report from the above model whatever so far we have seen the purpose of building this entire model is for this report you will understand what is a dimensional model now now you see it we have generated a simple report what is the report saying it is giving you sales by district by each brand what is the dollar amount sold what is the quantity sold this is a simple report but to get out this report from an operational system is not possible you cannot run a query on operational system to aggregate data and generate a report like this this is the exact purpose so far what we were struggling why we are struggling to build a data warehouses this is the one of the purposes you want it to analyze your data in a different way so that you can maintain inventory in so and so district look at the sales here in in uh, arthurton zippy the dollar amount generated is only 848 because the quantity sold is 707 whereas the arthurton clean uh, clean fast or more power the the brand it is sold high the quantity sold is high and the amount you received is high so how you will plan your inventory is based on this why will you supply more products to Atherton or uh, the brand Zippy because it is not sold there. You will have to maintain low inventory for that. If you are trying to maintain the same inventory for all the three brands, you will be at loss. Uh, after all, you will have to maintain your store properly. You cannot keep accommodating every each and every brand in the same quantity. If you go and look in a store, always rinse soaps will be more than uh, power soap or a tide soap. The reason is RIN is, been, you, is for, sold mostly. So you will have to maintain the inventory appropriately only then the customer is satisfied. If you come to a store, if you want 10 RIN soaps, you are telling I have only 2. You are on demand. But still customer is not satisfied. He is uh, very unhappy. You want the quantity 10 but you are providing him 2. So to, to satisfy the customer, look at your data. Next year, next month you can plan properly. That is the purpose of the data warehouse. Any questions guys? I, I mean, I I think I communicated the essence of data warehouse, but it is your time. If you have more questions on this, please go ahead. 
for any schema you can have more than one fact table in any uh, any star schema that is permitted for example in a retail schema you can have a sales fact you can also have an order facts table sales fact is going to talk about what is the sale happening at the uh, point of sale in the front uh, for the front end of your store whereas the order fact will be uh, monitoring the point of sale at your back end of the store where you are ordering items so the the answer for your question a data mart can have more than one fact table agreeable because it will be joined to the same set of dimensions but if you wanted to look at a report from the back end which is for your own purpose that is different story and you want it to understand the customer trends you are going to look it from the front end which is your point of sale your register that is one point so you can have more than one fact table no 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 the budgeting you are talking about will not fit into data warehouse as i told you the purpose of data warehouse is different from hr perspective uh, if we talk about hr actually it is resourcing we can talk about staffing we can talk about but you are talking about budgeting which is more of the finance part of it you will have to analyze from the finance perspective that you have 100 dollars how much you will have to allocate for each of your business yes that is that is a, a right thing you will have to do you can analyze the data from the finance uh, finance data mart perspective saying okay i have allotted last year i have allotted the 100 dollars 25 dollars to hr team uh, 50 dollars to the production and marketing team and uh, for 25 more dollars to the shipping team in the same way you will reorganize the budget depending upon who is spending more who is uh, who requires more you'll you'll reshuffle it so how do you reshuffle it you'll uh, finally come and see in your uh, data warehouse uh, their spending capability if let us say production and marketing team requires 60 percent last year you allotted only 50 but in between they are taking more loans from you so next year you will try to increase their budget whereas you saw that staff is not consuming 25 percent of the money you, you can put it as 15 percent or if you say i want more staff you will have to increase the budget that is how it is from the finance perspective that doesn't uh, really uh, touch on the sales part of it so as i told you this is case study for a retail sales here so we'll be talking in sense of products uh, market whereas if you go to the finance uh, domain everything will change the terms will change the dimensions will change the facts will change everything will change for an hr yes everything will change but the essence of it is dimensional model is going to be the same there will be a fact table for sure surrounded by the dimension table in any any data mart it is going to be the same you can have more than one fact table but a fact table is mandatory there you can have 100 different dimension tables but a dimension table is mandatory there without a fact table dimension is useless without a dimension a fact is useless so it is both are integrated in an environment and forms a star schema only then it is useful for business okay star schema is a multi dimensional model perfectly multidimensional which is a denormalized structure snowflake schema is a normalized structure when compared to the star schema so all you are trying to do is again again trying to avoid the key dependencies you are at least going to first normal form or second